An LED bulk headlight. Someone mentioned these. I thought they were in Lidl's. They weren't. I went to Lidl's looking for them. They weren't there. And it just so happened that locally there's a place called Aldi's and they had these. So I bought one to take a look at. So this is a typical sort of wall mounting light you put next to your front door or back door or wherever you wanted light in a corridor or something like that. And it's a sort of waterproof exterior fixture. And technically speaking, I should be showing you this. Let, let's zoom down a little bit. And I'm wondering what type of technology it's going to use. Is it going to use a switchboard power supply, the sort of standard transformer based one? Or is it going to use a little buck regulator? Or is it going to use a capacitive dropper? Which I'm thinking it could well do. Or it might be using the new... Well, I was going to say driverless, but they're not really driverless. They're now calling them DOBS, driver on board type chips. So let's uh, find out what's inside this. It claims to be 5 watt, which is, that fits well within all those technologies. So let's get the electrical cover off. Ooh, simple enough. It's got a bright yellow seal in there. It's got the little terminal block. Now, technically speaking, I should show you this lit. I've actually just seen something. It's got the aluminium is visible on the back of the LED panel in here where the wires go through. I need to wire this up so we can see it lit and see if it flickers. Do I have a flex? Keep in mind, I'm currently in crew accommodation at the moment, so I'm just trying to think what I could use as a flex. What comes to mind is cut and lead off my toothbrush charger. Do I really want to do that? Yes, I do, because I want to see this lit. One moment, please. Right, well, that's not going to reach much longer. So I'd like to thank Steve, my co-worker, for the loan of his snips, by the way. That's one thing I forgot here. I've hooked the wire in. Things worthy of note, they've got little crimps on the end of this, and they're kind of just pushed in a wee bit too far. And it just makes it that hard, bit harder to terminate. You're a bit better actually pulling these wires out a little bit. But the wire has been terminated in. Let's see if it flickers horribly. And just in case it does flicker horribly on camera, I'll warn you to, uh, that it's going to possibly going to flicker just in case any of you have photosensitive disorders. So let's try it. It lights instantly. Let's just try that again. And no flicker. That's good. Okay. That's pretty interesting. It looks as though there's LEDs all the way along here. That's kind of neat. Okay, let's open it up now you've seen it lit. Sure, I shall pop these wires out again. Or will I pop them? No, I won't pop them out again. I'll tell you what, let's get the camera back into position because, you know, I've gone back over here. Oh, but before I do that, these uh, built-in USB sockets um, put out three volts under even a low load. That's uh, the perils of built-in electronics. But let's return to the subject in hand. Other things worth mentioning are that it does come with little knockouts on the side and it comes with uh, plugs that go into those and specifically mentions not to use flat cable like Twin Earth so they're expecting some sort of weather-rated flex or something to come out of the wall. They also go into detail in the instructions about drilling holes diagonally down as you're going out of your building if you're running cable out and drip loops. So it's quite a comprehensive set of instructions. But let's get the back off this. So this came from Aldi's. Now there's two shops in the UK. One, well, there's lots of shops in the UK, but there's two uh, sort of chain stores. One's called Aldi and one's called Lidl. I think they may be owned by brothers. And there's sort of rivals and they're a very similar style of shop it's very much stack it high it's quite cheap stuff and it's good stuff i think it's a german chain and uh, aldi's normally brings in sort of well lidl's actually normally brings in stuff every monday and thursday i think they bring in sort of gadgets and things like that just to get people into the shop and lidl's tends to have the stuff out all sort of all week long so uh it's always quite interesting to win because their stuff is it's quite novel. It's good for junky gadgets. So I'll be going in there again, looking for stuff. I think that be, might be where Julian Eilert uh, recently got the uh, the batteries and chargers. Ooh. So there's a seal and a lip on the dome, the cover, and it is DOB, driver on board. 
So let's uh, take a closer look at this. You know what, will I reverse engineer it first? No, let's take a closer look first. So just to get you up a bit closer, I'm just gonna pause and stick a box under so we can lift this up and get a more detailed image. So it's one of these slightly annoying circuit boards. It's single-sided, it's got an aluminum back uh, with the fiberglass shim laid in the front. I have to say the neutral looks a bit blobby, like uh, it's not been quite up to temperature when it gets soldered on. I won't poke that too hard in case it pops off. It's got the metal ox resistor. It's got what looks like an inrush limiting F, oh, fusible resistor one, yep. So it's got an inrush and fusible resistor there. It's got the bridge rectifier. It's got the chip, the current regulating chip, and then the LEDs are th that odd. These two LEDs are in parallel, but these ones are in series. Oh, and then it goes parallel again at the corners. All the corners have the LEDs in parallel. Is that just because there's less heat sink in that area, do you reckon? Um, or is it because of the curvature that they just require less light in that area? I'm not sure. That's odd. I've not seen that done before. Um, it has a little capacitor, a resistor. I can't read these values, so I'm going to have to pause to reverse engineer it and see if I can find a number in this. Um, can we see a number in that? Hold on. Let's say uh, sometimes if I just super zoom right down like this. I may be able to spot a number. No, it's gone into super granular zoom, so not quite. What about the... I can more or less see the value on the resistors. Is that 10 ohm? 2R4, 2.4 ohm? 105, that's... Uh, the 105 is the... Uh, uh, well, it's a 1 mega ohm resistor. I'm not sure what that's for. And the capacitor. Okay, one moment, please. I'm just going to reverse engineer this. Behold the schematic. So I've measured some component values. That is a definitely a 10 ohm resistor, the set of fusible resistor and input. There's a metal oxide varistor across it for spike protection. That's kind of important with these circuits because a voltage spike, if this chip doesn't react in time, will cause quite a high current through the LEDs. Then it goes through the LEDs and that's where it does get strange. If you look at these LEDs on this thing, I'll just unplug this again. I've been doing electrical tests. The corners do have the LEDs as parallel pairs, so there's four parallel pairs, but the rest is actually individual LEDs. And going by the voltage I've measured across those LEDs, which I shall do that for you at the end again, I'm measuring about 15 volts across the LEDs, which suggests there's actually five chips inside each of those packages. That's not uncommon. That just allows them to increase the voltage across the LED, because in this application, it lets them use less LEDs the voltage is higher across them. So the combined LED voltage is around about 210 volts across that. The LED current flows through the LEDs and then comes to the chip. The chip had a number on it, which I've just forgotten, but it doesn't really matter anyway. I shall put it down in the comments down below, in the description down below, but it's a very vague, it's a four character code. It's, it, I couldn't find anything at all. I think it's possibly a standard chip. In fact, I have a sneaky feeling it might be one of these ones that's divided into two halves, but I'm not really sure about that. The way the circuitry is configured, there's a one mega ohm resistor, which I think is possibly supplying the power to the chip itself for biasing the internal transistors on. It's got the input, but that's also decoupled from the zero volt rail, the uh, negative rail by this 10 nanofarad capacitor. I measured that in the circuit, so I'm not 100% sure what its real value is, but it came very close to 10 nanofarad one way around, which was pretty typical for that value. We've got the negative connection, which there's two actually in this chip that go down to the sort of negative rail here. And then there's the sense resistors, which are 2.4 ohm and 10 ohm in series, giving 12.4 ohms. And the way that works, the chip will regulate current. Current will flow through these, and when the voltage on here reaches a certain threshold, it will then start regulating back. This will probably have thermal protection as well. So if it gets too hot, it will start regulating down. That's to protect itself. That's also to protect the LEDs. It means that in an over voltage situation or just where there's not enough ventilation, this will, like many of these devices do, start at its 5 watt rating and then sort of gradually reduce in power. And its rating, I've measured the AC current. Um, I've not measured the DC current because it's not that practical to do so without actually breaking into the circuit somewhere here. 
I can't even get a clamp meter around anything because this is an aluminium back panel. How much of that was in a shot? Was I just randomly, yeah, okay, right, that's, that's okay. So, not sure what this is. The, these pins are not used. It might be one of those ones that uh, the chip sort of has a flipped version, a sort of second channel. But that's it. So, this chip here acts just as an electronically active variable resistor, measures the current through these. Once it reaches a certain level, the voltage there rises up to the point that it starts regulating back, and then it just dissipates the excess power as heat like a resistor, but one that's dynamically adjusting to uh, fit these. Now, I do notice that there's no smoothing in this, so it's really strange that the camera didn't pick up flicker. It did well there. I would have expected quite a bit of flicker, particularly given the fact that the combined forward voltage is about 210 volts. So if that's the sine wave humps coming from the rectifier, and that's about 330 volts, that would be about there that it's turning on, so it's only actually lit for that part of the sine, each sine wave. But there we go. So now I shall show you some basic electrical tests. We'll plug it in and we'll probe it. So I'll just reposition the camera for that. So excuse the swamping out of light. The first test I'm going to do is I'm going to precariously measure across one of these LEDs and see if I can make connection because it's those tiny little uh, surface mounted soda connections. Here we go, 15 volts across that LED. Divided by three gives the uh, five chips. The other test I'm going to do here, I'm going to flip this over. Uh, I'll turn it off momentarily while I do this. Let's turn this to current and we'll stick it on AC current. Get it around one of these wires. It's a bit shady. Is that going to work? Um, and theoretically, this should give us, well, 24 milliamps. Okay, that's good. Uh, 24 milliamps, let's uh, get back to the normal position here. So featuring my resplendent new two pound, pound land calculator, that's uh, 0 0.024 amps, that's 24 milliamps, times the local supply voltage, I guess it's 240. Um, I could measure that right now. I suppose I could just stuff the leads in there, couldn't I? Would give 5.76 watts. But um, because of the power factor and all that, the area it's drawn, hold on, let's get the leads, let's stuff this. Let's stuff this into live electrical connections. So let's turn it back off and then turn it back on again. Uh, let's zoom down in this and then I'll just shove it right into that socket. So at the moment it's displaying 0.2 volts AC. Let's just uh, precariously shove that down and try not to blow the power out to this flat I'm in at the moment. 241 volts. Yes, yeah, screw your European 230 volts, it still is 240 volts. So that was pretty accurate then. And if I've measured the if that's the current that's flowing through the LEDs, then theoretically, if we just zoom back out again a little bit. Oh, incidentally, this calculator, just for those who are geeky about such things, one of the nicest things about it, and this is particularly important when you're measuring sort of electronic values, microfarads and stuff like that, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 digits, that's really odd. And even says GT grand total at the end. It's a very, very odd calculator. It looks like it's got a real solar panel. But I digress. Hold on. The voltage across the LEDs was 210 volts times if that RMS current equates to an RMS rectified 24 milliamps equals the five watts. Well, there you go. That's a nice round figure. So there we have it. It, it looks okay. Oh, this does, this does leave one thing. I should leave it on for a while and check the temperature. One moment, please. Oh, it's just swamped out. Hold on a second. Right, let's uh, get that back down there. Oh no, a bit of flicker now. This is not good. This is what happens you point directly at light sources. But you can see the temperature over the surface of that, although it's not the perfect surface to measure off. Let's see if we can get the chip. It's round about 60 degrees Celsius on average in that circuit board. So um, that's 
with the lid off and the ambient temperature is currently, let's point at the bench, 25 degrees, is that? 26. Okay, so typically say about 35 above ambient. Right, one moment please. Right, I shall uh, review that footage and see if it's not too flickery. And if it is too flickery, maybe I'll just re-record this bit. But I think it got the message across of the measurements. So that's it. It does appear that a decent level of waterproofing has been done this. Uh, both here and on the little cover in the back has its little seal. I wonder how well that will keep the water out. Not really much to go wrong inside. The plate itself will get pretty hot and operation would immediately uh, displace any moisture that appeared on it. But it's already got the uh, protective coating in the sense of the soda resist on this. The black bits were an attempt to actually try and get a surface to get a good thermal reading off, but it wasn't that easy. It need, needed an actual bit of material in that because the glossy surfaces aren't the best ones to actually measure off. It should be a matte surface. But there we go. The Aldi 5 watt bulkhead light, which does appear to draw 5 watts and seems to work okay and comes a three year warranty. But whether they actually or know the warranty or whether, you know, people would go to the bother for such a cheap light. I think this was about five pounds or something like that. Um, so I don't think they'd be really bothered if it failed. Although here's that situation again, that with an ordinary bulkhead, you take the cover off and you change the lamp and then you put the cover back on again. With this one, if it fails, that's it failed and you have to change the whole fixture. So in many ways, the miracle LED revolution isn't such a miracle if people have to learn how to do electric work themselves or employ electricians at grossly inflated part P type prices uh, to come in and uh, change entire light fittings when an LED fails. Now, that's not very good, but this is how it seems to be going. A little tiny, LED bulkhead fixture but that does seem to be quite well designed.